Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everybody to Progress Kentucky's Kernels of Truth. I am, I am wondering why I'm hearing oh no. What's going on? Are we live? Ken, we good? Great. That oh no was nothing to worry about. Uh, <laughs> All right, we got a really exciting show for you. Before we get, you know, after we get through this, these little hiccups, these technical difficulties we like to start the show with, we uh, we are gonna hear from our co-hosts. Uh, you know, we're gonna talk about some political news of the week, uh, some pretty good one, uh, good stories, I think, to share with you. Uh, and then we've got Representative Colonel Pam Stevenson. So we're going to hear from her. Yeah. If you remember, if you remember Colonel Pam, uh, we talked to her before she was officially Representative Colonel Pam. Uh, and she uh, is now going to come back and talk to us about what she thought of her first General Assembly. Uh, but first, folks, here's our quick plug for Progress Kentucky. Uh, I don't know if you've heard this before, but we are an all-volunteer campaign committed to turning Kentucky purple by supporting compassionate policies which put people first. So if you care about that mission and you want to help us meet our goal of raising $1,500 for our current organizing project, and I tell you, it's a good project. I'm pretty excited about this project. I would really like to do this project, but... I can't write a check for $1,500 or my wife will divorce me. So if you could help out and make some, you know, uh, make some donations, uh, help us to do the project, please head to our secure Act Blue page and make a donation. Five, 50, 500, whatever you're able to commit to uh, the campaign without, um, you know, getting any, any marital trouble, uh, go ahead and do it. We, you know, we don't want to introduce discord in your family life, but we do want to see a big contribution if you support that mission. So, uh, folks, uh, we're going to check in with our co-hosts. Who are you? Where are you? And what does your protest sign say today? Of course, we ask that question because we're not just a collection of talking heads here, you know, insightful political analysts. We are we are committing to a digital demonstration against the status quo uh and you know really whatever you got so uh i'm aaron coming to you from childsburg uh you know a community on the southeast side of lexington the large land mass there and uh my sign says it says uh corporations are not people and money is not speech that's me uh and i'm gonna throw it to denise I wasn't next on the thing, but hey, everybody. My name is Denise Gray. And I'm proud to be coming to you from the north side of Lexington, Kentucky. And you know, this week, my protest sign is in honor of, you know, the great, the late Earl Simmons. And they're also known as, to people who really are fans. If you don't know who he is, if when I said Earl Simmons, you're not a fan. Um, he's also known as DMX. Let's see if I can do this well. Mm -mm -mm. Do dirt, get dirt. So I treat people with the same respect I want. Scene. <laughs> Boom. Boom, yeah. <laughs> Mic dropped. There was no it was not growly enough for me. I'm no, I can't do the her. I can't do her because it comes out. Rrr. Oh my gosh. Next up we have Kimberly. What is your protest sign say? <laughs> Thank you. I can't believe you all are messing up my boy DMX like that. You know, I'm just going to say this. Lord, give me a sign. Okay. That's a great song. I that's right. <laughs> or I could say I'm slipping. I'm slipping. I can't, I get, can't up. get up. I'm right. Slipping. So, you know, we all know DMX and some of you all may not. So I got to bring this out the Rough Riders Anthem. That's going to be my sign today. I'm going to ride on that train with Miss Denise Gray with DMX. And I'm just going to say, stop, drop. This is to the legislatures. Stop, drop, hey. shut them down, open up shop, right? Hey. Oh, hey. no. That's the way kernels of truth go. Hey. That's my sign today. Yes. Yeah. Beat that. Dmx, thank you. Dmx, we love you, man. Yes. That that was awesome. 
Uh, all right. So I uh, we sh we're gonna have to just go right into some new. Oh wait, Ken, Ken, Ken. Ken's got a sign. I, I have a physics physical sign. I, I thought I'd use some of my art that I create. Everybody knows that I'm kind of an artist, and my protest sign is because the Kentucky legislator uh, legislator passed a constitutional amendment last month declaring no right to abortion abortion in Kentucky to protect human life. Uh, I, I don't buy it. Kentucky House, House Bill 91 is no different than a violation of women rights, women's rights and is cruelty. Uh, abortion, oh, my side is upside down. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's, a, it's a, abortion, it, it's a right, uh, it should be legal, is and should be legal. So that's Boom. my sign. Job well done with that sign. Uh, nice. The actual physical sign. I know he had a real sign, y'all. Ken always shows me up on the sign. Uh, so sure, I am just going to go ahead and say it. Uh, that Those are great signs. Thanks, everybody. Everyone fired up to protest tonight. Uh, and here's what we're going to be protesting. So <laughs> story number one comes to us from Kimberly. Thank you, Aaron. Um, let's talk about Mitch McConnell, one of our favorite subjects, of course. The political world's biggest hypocrite has now come out against what? Corporate influence on politics. Like, is that even possible? Of course it is. This is after companies such as Levi's, Coca-Cola, Delta, and others spoke up in opposition to the voter suppression laws passed in Georgia. I know so much has been going on, but you do remember Georgia, right? That's the state that elected Senator Warnock and Senator Ossoff and demoted Mitch, yes. Also known as the state that saved democracy. So sad it wasn't Kentucky, but hey, we got another chance. Uh, now we're gonna have a clip from Mitch. My warning, if you will, to corporate America is to stay out of politics. It's not what you're designed for. And don't be intimidated by the left into taking up causes that puts you right in the middle of one of America's greatest political debates. I'm, I'm not talking about political contributions. Most of them contribute to both sides. They have political action committees. That's fine. It's legal. It's appropriate. I support that. You know what? <laughs> Mitch Pocrisy. Loving it. This is from the politician who was a named opponent to campaign finance laws when they were challenged in the Supreme Court. Not once, but guess what? Twice. This from the politician who used that money to build up unprecedented power and influence to break our democracy, to block or ram through the Supreme Court justices, depending upon what was best for his corporate donors. Always, we can depend upon Mitch, Mitch McConnell for that. So I just wanna say to the CEOs right now, all right, CEOs, let me say this, and you corporate leaders, you know, did you hear him? Humana, Kindred, UPS, Brown Foreman, Chevron, ooh, Brown Foreman, ooh, my uncle used to work for Brown Foreman. Chevron, Goldman Sachs, AT&T, FedEx, and all the rest. You are among the companies who have given him millions over the years to buy policy and protect your interests. I think it's time for a refund. If you want to take a look at Mitch's top corporate funders, our research director, which is Mr. Dougie Dougie Fresh of Doug's Price is Right, has put together a list for you and I, which you can find right here on your screen. And it looks like a significant number of CEOs aren't scared off by Mitch. More than 100 CEOs, so happy for them, yay, are on a call this weekend to discuss their next steps to support voting rights. So as far as Mitch McConnell is concerned, it is the new trending word of the spring, Mitchocracy. Back to you, Aaron. Uh, that's great. Thank you. Uh, I, you know, I thought it was amazing that Mitch 
said that he was warning corporations to stay out of politics. He like those words came out of his mouth and his like head didn't explode. He wasn't kind of encompassed in fire immediately because clearly the guy, you know, guy's gotten more money, more campaign contributions from Fortune 500 CEOs than any other politician, right? Uh, he is Mr. Money, uh, in, corporate money in, in politics, right? Uh, so if he's serious though, you know, and I think, Let's take him at his word that he wants to minimize corporate influence on our political system. Well, then really the man needs to get behind HR1, right? You know, the For the People Act, uh, which is the single most powerful solution to keep billionaires from buying our elections. Uh, of course, HR1 is also the thing that would you know, make sure that states like Georgia couldn't do the shenanigans they're pulling right now in terms of voter restrictions. So I doubt that Mitch is going to get behind HR1. But I will say this, I think all those corporations uh, that you know, have been speaking out and are inflaming Mitch's uh, you know, amazing corporate sensibility or uh, campaign and democracy sensibilities, they should be going all in on HR1, right? We should absolutely go, you know, kind of uh, go him one better. Don't stay out of politics, get more involved in politics. I don't know, what do you think, Denise? Well, you know, I'm tired of hearing folk like Mitch McConnell, who, who want to create this divisive, I don't know, he wants vision between, as he calls, liberals. He wants the whole creating out this evil group of liberals, which is Amer Americans. Liber Americans want you to believe such and such. Um, just anything that comes out of Mitch McConnell's mouth that it speaks of divisive terms, such as he just, that was one of the first things he said, beware a lie or some sort of con, it will erupt from it. And this, and we all know that Mitch McConnell is a con artist, the best to do it. So that's all I have to say. You all, And also if Mitch is telling people to stay out or anyone to stay out of politics, that's time for you to jump in. Do the opposite of what Mitch McConnell wants you to do because you all, he's 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 good with the silvery, silvery tongue over there saying one thing and doing so much other. The opposite. Yeah. Uh, Ken, do you have anything you want, do you want to weigh in on the story? Okay. <laughs> I, I do no. have something I would like to say if possible. All right. Of thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I mean, honestly, Mitch McConnell has just been doing his spewing his lies. Uh, he's the uh, American uh, great snake Leviathan, uh, uh, evil spirit, one of the top ones. And I just think that he needs to go get a colonic. He's been constipated for the last 36 years. Ooh. That's all I wanted to say. Back to you, Aaron. <laughs> uh, yeah, as much as much as I, I do not like Mitch McConnell, I'm going to just go right here on, rec on record saying I do not agree with Trump's assessment. Uh, this was also in the news uh, this week uh, oh. that Trump down at Mar-a-Lago lit in to Mitch McConnell, uh, basically because Mitch McConnell didn't go along enough <laughs> with uh, Trump trying to steal the election, right? So that was like, you know, th that was a bridge too far for Trump. So, oh my God, he, you know, he thinks the election was you know, actually legitimate. Uh, so, you know, calling him a dumb son of a, you know, this, this family show. So I'm not gonna say what he, what he said, but uh, wow. really called him a stone cold loser, all these things like, and the thing that I think is uh, phenomenal is, you know, Mitch who won going away here in Kentucky, right? Uh, Trump seems to think that, you know, Mitch couldn't have won without his uh, coattails, which... I mean, you know, he used... Um, Mitch McConnell did probably use Trump in his ad. So he needed Trump in order to win here in the state of Kentucky or else if Mitch thought that he would be able to stand on his own two feet, he wouldn't have used them. So maybe Trump does... He, he might have some facts there. I don't know. I, I'm going to need to look at those numbers a little more closely. I feel like no, he as much as I wish that was true. <laughs> I, but you all, here's the deal. No one that, no, you don't use anything that you don't need. He obviously needed to use Trump in his ad for some sort of reason. I'm not saying it was to help him win. Perhaps it was to help him gain more money. Perhaps it was for him to get a certain, um, you know, um, someone to come out and say, be in support of him. 
there was a reason everything that Mitch does is calculated and conniving and not so good. Um, so there is rationale to believe that for some reason he needed Trump in order to win, period. Uh, I think Mitch is a smart operator. And I think if there's an advantage to be had somewhere, he will absolutely use it. Exactly. Uh, but I'm not willing to say that he had to have Trump to win. <laughs> I just don't think, I don't know that, I don't know that's a fair assessment of the political situation here in Kentucky. Currently. He used him for a reason, but, that's what I'm going to say. Uh, he absolutely <laughs> used him and it gained him an advantage. That's 100% sure, for sure. Thank you. But hey, Denise, I think you've got the next story. We're taking from the political, from the national level, we're going to take it to the state level. Uh, Denise, what you got for us? Well, thank you there, Aaron Biles. Sure and thing, Trump. Denise Gray. <laughs> so you all, you, we all know that our governor, Governor Andy Bashir, has proven himself to be willing to work with uh, those across the aisle. Um, he understands that uh, political, in order to get anything in our state government, that we have to work together and political affiliation has nothing to do with getting the work done. Um, so he's gotten accolades in the past for Kentucky's um, work on voting rights, where he was able to work greatly and profoundly with Secretary of State Michael Adams to help expand Kentucky's um, voting rules. As you know, expanded our um, early voting. We actually were able to vote early and in person. We were able to vote via the mail. Um, and that took through compromises by both Secretary of State Mike Adams and our governor. Um, well, now Progress Kentucky has seen another effort to highlight his bipartisan leadership. There's a Facebook post touting Andy signing a bipartisan bill on spending five federal dollars. So that's all well and good, right? And it's true that any bill in front of him um, to any bill in front of him to sign, there must be Republican support because you know because of the Republican super duper majority, destructive majority, as we saw this past session in both our House and our Senate. But on this one particular bill, Republicans would not have been allowed to be sent would not have allowed this bill to be sent. Is that correct? It, when I read it, it sounds, hmm. So Governor Bashir assembled leadership from both parties to sign a number of bills, uh, which federal, um, federal programs, such as uh, federal rescue plan funds, which is House Bill 320 and House Bill 382 bills to spend $600 on hot, that's so, $600 billion on high-speed internet deployment throughout our state. And as we all know, we need that all across this Commonwealth where we have so many outages and without internet or connections. Um, the bill will also fund a wide range of initiatives including full day kindergarten, which you know I'm a huge proponent of, um, and reopening office in Northern Kentucky, which has been without an office since, guess this, you all, since March, 2018. Um, House Bill 556 provides $127 million for school construction and $75 million for renovation costs for local vocational schools, critical for workforce development. And as we know that not all students will go to college. So this will be a great area for more young people, more adults to become efficient and certified in, in trades. Uh, the $127 million um, that have been allocated for renovating and uh, replacing school facilities will speed up improvements to schools that have been as assessed as most in need. And you all, around this Commonwealth, we have a lot of schools that are in need. Um, um, as Kentucky schools currently have $7 billion in facilities needs beyond what uh, 
what they can pay for. Um, the bill also includes $20 million for funding in rural hospitals. Senate Bill 36 allocates $250 million in grant funds to provide critical upgrades to water and sewer infrastructure in communities across the Commonwealth. So we hope that places like Inez, Kentucky can get the little drop of that because that is so in need over there in Martin, Kentucky. We all know the, these critical need, these needs are all criticals. Uh, we've had activists on it from Martin County. And if you all watch my own um, show, you all probably met two of, um, we have um, Mr. the McCoy uh, from INS Kentucky, who has been a huge um, advocate for that, um, just discussing the clean water issues. These are all important funding initiatives and they all, they all position our Commonwealth for more jobs, which we need, and greater economic success, which we need improvement since we are on the bottom ranked on both of those areas. But if they are so great, think about this. If they are so great and so important, why did Mitch and Rand do everything possible to vote against that bill. Think about that. So what do you all think? I'm gonna throw it to Kimberly. What do you think about that? Uh, what do I think about? Or um, Aaron, either one of you all can jump in. Aaron could go first, cause I yeah. got a lot to say. Let him I go ahead and go first, yeah. I, know uh, I guess I'll, I'll, keep it, I'll keep it brief. So Kimberly has enough, you know, runway for what she's got to get at. But no, I, you know, I think it's outrageous. Like, it, it's, it's so disappointing, right? So we've got, you know, our man in Frankfurt, Andy Bashir, doing the right thing for our state, day in and day out, bending over backward to work with, you know, work with these hooligans, right? Uh, it, who do not, you know, hooligans. again, yeah. one agenda. It's a two-part agenda that they had in Frankfurt, right? Uh, they had a take Andy's power away from him and give away our tax dollars to corporations. That's like the two things they were doing in Frankfurt during this general assembly. I, you know, at least that's what it seems to me, you know, they, you know, they, they deign to sign some bills to program the federal dollars. Uh, so they would go to things that are useful for our Commonwealth, critical for our Commonwealth. And they're all going to like bend over backwards, to like take credit for it. Right. Right. But none of that money would be showing up in Frankfurt if Mitch and Rand had their way. Right. right. They voted, you know, not a single Republican voted for the uh, American Rescue uh, Plan. So not remember this one. next year when Rand Paul will go around saying he's done everything that he could for Kentuckians. Remember this. He refused to help all these areas that are in need. Martin County, remember this, when you all are drinking that clean, fresh water that's trickling down your throats and nourishing your bodies. Remember, Rand Paul said no, no to you having that fresh, clean, clean water. Mm. Yeah, and you know, and that 250 million grant funds is probably, again, it's like a, it is a literal and figurative drop in the bucket in it terms really of what is. is needed for our clean water systems throughout the Commonwealth, right? So I think we're gonna need the, um, you know, that the infrastructure plan as well, the jobs, uh, jobs Act that they're trying to pass as well. And I'm, you know, pretty confident <laughs> there won't be any Republican support for that one either, right? No. They are so just, you know, all about their own partisan power grabs. They don't wanna work with, uh, you know, with across the aisle to do what's best for the people in this country. And, you know, you're right. You know, they're gonna like claim the contrary and if we let them, you know, voters will forget. So we need to like make sure that we are a broken record on this stuff and we don't let them get away with it because I think it's, it's outrageous and it's just, you know, why get into politics if it's just about performative attention seeking, right? And it's not actually for providing for people. Right, I don't you know, get those. It, it's, it's basically to me, it is uh, the power, money hungry, let's secure the bag for ourselves and our families and nobody else because someone has to be a loser in the situation and they're never going to make it them be the loser. 
they're going to always come out the winner. That's why, as Miss Denise Gray mm -hmm. always says, your vote has consequences, and it does. And I did say this on my show uh, mm -hmm. yesterday on the Jones Report. I quoted Miss Denise Gray on that, and mm -hmm. it is true. Uh, these people don't give a rat's patootie about you or anything that concerns you, whether it concerns water, your health, education, uh, insurance. They care about nothing but how much they can get for themselves. So um, if I had to do another protest sign today and it wasn't about DMX, God bless the soul of heaven, I would say legislators, okay, like quit drinking the Q9 Kool-Aid because apparently it's done something to the brain. And we're still trying to figure out where that 200 million for mental health that Mitch McConnell supposedly brought back to Kentucky, uh, I don't see it working anywhere. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of questions that need to be answered and we need to vote all of them out, O-U-T, out. 100%. All right, so one quick thing. Uh, if you, like us, are outraged and offended by what that GOP super duper majority is doing uh, to our political system in Kentucky, if you're tired of the G Kentucky GOP, you know, looking to take Andy's power, stand in his way and give away your tax dollars to corporations, you need to get involved. As Tip O'Neill said, all politics is local. I think that's who said it. Uh, and uh, you need to get involved at the local level because that's how we start taking, you know, taking our commonwealth back from these crazy individuals. Uh, it's about getting a alternative policy vision out there. So sharing it with your neighbors. It's connecting the dots between the fact that, you know, President Joe Biden is going to cut childhood poverty in half with his uh, tax credit, uh, you know, money for folks who have kids. Uh, to make sure that kids aren't growing up poor. That is going to help people across this commonwealth. We are not a rich commonwealth. There are a lot of people who are going to be helped by that. We got to claim that. We got to connect the dots for people. We got to elect more Democrats. The single best way to do that is get involved in your local level. Join the precinct committees. You literally have half an hour right now to register to get involved with that political process. If you're watching this live, if you're listening to this after the fact, don't worry about it. <laughs> you missed your chance. But if you want to get involved and you're like, I don't know, here's the thing. There are three slots for every precinct committee, uh, man, woman, or, uh, you know, uh, you know, gender, uh, in, in specific, not specific, uh, uh, not, uh, and a youth. So there's three slots to get involved with. And right now, only 40% of Lexington's precincts ha have even one of those slots filled. Uh, where people are saying, I want to fill one of those slots. And before you get all, you know, ooh, Lexington, Kimberly, only 29% of Louisville precincts uh, have one of those slots filled. Uh, so come on, folks. You know, you don't have to have precinct leaders to organize our, you know, cities and counties, but it puts us at a distinct disadvantage when it comes to helping spread the word about our policies, politics of our state, and why we need to retire Rand and help reelect Governor Bashir, which is, you know, next up is fighting Rand. The year after that is reelecting Andy. So let's, you know, let's step up, right? If you want to represent your precinct, uh, eight and eight o'clock tonight, you got to uh, sign up. We can put the link in the chat. Uh, if you are like, I don't know, I don't really want to do it, but maybe I would if no one else steps up. I know that dynamic, it's real. <laughs> uh, if you would like to find out if anyone else is stepping up in your precinct, we can tell you. Uh, so, you know, put it in the chat right now. I think Doug Price is watching. He's got, you know, he can look it up for you. If you know your precinct, you can look up your precinct pretty quickly at the Secretary of State's website uh, if you don't know that information. Uh, but yeah, a lot of folks in Progress Kentucky are taking, taking part. Uh, I am going to be running for Needle Rush Precinct Committee. Uh, I'm excited about it. That's my, that's my the, the name of my precinct, Needle Rush. Uh, Ken is running for his. Right, Ken? Castlewood. Uh, and then Denise has got something to say, maybe. Brookwood woman. And I don't know who that woman is who signed up to run against me. Oh. But you better step aside because Denise Gray is here. It is on. 
I don't even know if I have somebody running against me, but I'm running for LD. And okay, LD is, LD is like the next step. disability. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but none of us, none of us can hold a candle to Kit because they actually had sent out a press release. They've got a Facebook page. They are taking this all the way. Uh, and they are, I'm sure, because, you know, because they've got a, they've got a actual comp, they've got a competition as well. Uh, but Doug is running uh, in Harrison County. We've got a lot of folks running to be involved because we, we, you know, again, that's how you make change is get involved with your neighborhood level. It's easy. It's fun. Do it. Uh, but again, if you want to find out if anyone is running in your precinct, uh, go ahead and check out the chat. I think Doug can hook you up with that information right now. And you've got, again, until uh, 8 o'clock to get registered. So you should go ahead and just register for sure. Because, you know, why not? All right. Um, the call to action, though, this, this is that, that's, that probably felt like a call to action. That's not the call to action. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what we want you to do uh, what we think is important, uh, uh, I came up with a graphic about Mitch and his, uh, you know, corporate craziness, the Mitchpocracy, uh, him telling corporations to get out of politics. Let's take him at his word. And uh, there's the image. Uh, it's on our Facebook page right now. Just go share it. So those are some of uh, Mitch's biggest donors right there, UPS, Humana, Kindred, AT&T, Chevron, Brown and Foreman, of course. Uh, those are the folks who are saying, hey, Mitch doesn't want you involved in politics, so get your money back uh, and support HR1. So let's go ahead and share that. Let's make it uh, you know, go viral. Let's hit the viral button. Uh, share it with your friends, share it with your neighbors. Share it on Twitter if you like. Share it wherever. Let's see uh, if a bunch of Republicans are forced to defend Mitch his uh, hypocrisy because uh, they will. You know they will. Uh, but let's go ahead and just inform people of what Bill uh, Mitch had to say about uh, money in politics and about corporate influence in politics, uh, and see if we can make his head explode. So, all right, uh, that is it for the call to action. And very excited uh, to move on to our next item for the show. Uh, and welcome back to the live stream, uh, State Representative Colonel Pam Stevenson, JD, uh, Representative of District 43 uh, in Louisville. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, uh, Representative Colonel Pam. So glad to be here. Now I have a really important question. You sent me an email that said the Colonels of Truth. Was that a special title for me? <laughs> No, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it's not. We changed our name. Oh, so man. after we, after we it's stopped crazy. going solely <laughs> after Mitch, uh, we changed the name from Moscow Mitch Monday to Colonels of Truth. Oh, so. why don't you just humor me? I was yes, it is say yes. special for you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what this means. Representative Colonel Pam, is you can come on whenever you want because you're a Colonel of Truth as well. So yeah. he's good. He's good. I love it. We're so excited to have you back. Uh, you. So you know, we had you before. I think you had just done your orientation, maybe, and then you you know came in uh, came in and checked in with us. How was it? How was your first General Assembly? Are you Smooth over? Smooth sailing, okay? right? I say what? Smooth sailing, right? Oh my gosh. I mean, who knew that's how we made sausage? Like, <laughs> who knew if the American people knew that in these legislatures that things happened the way they happened, they would be afraid. It was drinking from a fire hose, but it's good, good work for good people. And it was disappointing in some ways. And uh, there were some joyful things that happened. Awesome. Hey, oh, and I, I totally glossed over our, our ceremonial first question. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm ready. I do it about half the time I remember. Um, uh, so what is your protest sign say tonight? Tonight, my protest sign says, engage in the streets, in the boardrooms, and in the government. Engage everywhere. Nice. Is that, is that a Colonel Pam quote? Or that sounds yes. nice. Because <laughs> I can't have my own kernels of truth. I got to have something. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like truth. I, I think you def you're definitely an honorary Colonel of Truth. Colonel of that truth. right there was a great one. 
but uh, representative stevenson you mentioned there were some good good times during mm -hmm. the session could you please tell me one thing no i know that your bill was passed hey 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 i'm proud of you i know that they sang for you boo, 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 boo. but i don't know what that was everybody but what's some good that came out of this some session good things you guys so first of all politics the way we do it now is a game of inches and not yards. You'll never get something through entirely the first time that's everything you want. So some good things that happened was, one, we had the West Louisville TIF, where they're gonna put $30 million worth of tax money back into businesses and moving people from home ownership, um, from renting to home ownership. That's good. And the board has to be 51% West Louisvillians, and it also has to be one person from each neighborhood. We have funding and we have the authority to make something happen for our community. Nice. That's good. Number two, they found a way to have um, the Kentucky State support the other historical Black college in the state of uh, Kentucky so that they can, their students can go through their teaching program and utilize funding scholarships from Kentucky. Wonderful. That's a big deal. That is amazing. Because the Simmons College is responsible for 50% of the teachers. Mm -hmm. And the big problem was they could not use Kentucky finances. I mean, not uh, scholarships. Yeah. So now they found a way to make sure that those who would like to go to Simmons and, and, and also a way for the two historically black colleges to operate together. That's a good thing. And for everybody who doesn't that know, good. sorry, Pam, representative, mm -hmm. uh, for people who are watching who don't know who, who the other historically black co college or university is, that's K Kentucky State University. And that's what HBCU means, just yeah. so you know. Go ahead. Yeah. The other good thing is one of the one of my horrors was how is it that we take people that were in the prison system, put them out on the street after they served their sentence with no money, no ID card, no place to live, and no way to keep them on the up and up. And it's just, and then they don't even get SNAP benefits, they don't get Section 8, they get nothing. And then we're surprised when they go back to crime. Well, we passed House Bill 497, and um, they now will leave with an identification card from the state of Kentucky saying, this is who I am, and they can start applying for jobs and doing things like that. Most things you cannot do without an identification card. So that's good. Now, one of my favorite things is not a bill, but it's the beginning, and it's important. Kentucky is the first state to make the last day of February the day that connects Black History Month and Women's History Month uh, is a day to honor Black women. Well, hello. Mm -hmm. I'm right here. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm loving that. I'm yeah. loving that. I'm mm -hmm. definitely loving that. Oh, yeah. Now, here's the thing. We do what we always do from and the love. times of slavery hey. when we... When we um, left our house and go took care of the master's house, nursed our baby, go nurse the master's baby, all the way to the women in Alabama who said there will not be a child molester in the U.S. Senate, to everything we do in the background. Now is the call to do it in the foreground. Mm -hmm. We are going to own our power. Own it. And we're going to make sure that we bring everybody else along like we have always been doing. That's what we do. That's what we did. So I'm very proud of that. And I'm hoping this year that I get some other states to join in making February 28th to 29th the day to honor Black women. Now, here's the white thing you do. The way you honor Black women is you go back into your family and your community and you acknowledge every woman in your life. So this is very inclusive, but it's in honor of the Black woman. I know that's right. Honor us. Love yeah. you too. Yeah. So that's, uh, it was a resolution. Nobody voted against it. It passed. We, wow. Because it's a resolution, we have to do it every year until we uh, decide we don't need it or we get passed into law. So I'm excited about that. We also passed um, 
the mental health. You know, in this country, particularly the pandemic has shown that we all have mental health issues yeah. and we now just need to own them. Well, you can't own it if there are no uh, facilities, providers to do that. If you wanted to go talk to somebody, it's oftentimes difficult. So they gave a little encouragement to the mental health community and the disabled community, which never gets any press. And they have big problems like getting left stranded at, at a doctor's appointment because TARC goes on strike. Who does that? And they started that process of giving them a flag and elevating the issue of everyone needs mental health services at one time or other. Wonderful. I, I agree with that totally um, about the mental health part because I do work in that field and I know how uh, overwhelming it can be for us that work in that field. And we do need more monies. We do need more resources. Um, you know, case loads can be extremely heavy, you know, and almost working 24 hours around. Oh. Yeah, and, and she's, and, you know, she's, she's very right. Now here's the other thing. When I say it's a game of inches, it's a game of inches, you guys. So for example, we didn't get everything we wanted in the voting rights bill, mm -hmm. but we got more than what we had. Right. And we also made it so that if you are a person without a home, but you have a temporary address, they can vote too. That was not going to happen. What are you smiling at, Denise Gray? No, I'm just, I'm just proud of you. Um, oh, because you know, I'm proud of you. This was your first session. Um, as a representative and you you made your your voice known people know you you stood up for all that was good you were able to hold people accountable but yet do it in such a respectful way that everyone was like in awe of your leadership and you 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 shined you you did shine well i have to tell you i think one of you said it before that if you don't love God's people, if you don't love people, if you don't want to do good, if you don't want to live for something bigger than itself, we're going to get what we got in a lot of places, mm -hmm. which is 10 bills that have nothing to do with feeding people, clothing people, or keeping them from being evicted as the first line of business on January the 5th. Now, why are you doing 10 bills that's stripping the gov governor of his powers when he's in the middle of a successful battle it's all politics. That's the part I didn't like. If they had been smart, they would have put five bills that said, I'm going to feed these people. I'm going to get clean water to this country, uh, uh, this part of the state. And I'm going to get um, broadband. Let Kentucky be the first state to have broadband door to door. And then do your dirt. But no, they were so hungry that they went directly towards, I want to get all the power I can right now, right here. And it's a disservice to who we are as Kentuckians. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I amen. I you know, I think your attitude has just come through. Uh, you know, and again, I'm I'm in Lexington, so you know, you're not my representative. You aren't necessarily the representative that people are you know paying attention to in Lexington news. But I, I still saw you. You were still getting attention in a in I think a very positive way. And I think your your approach and your attitude is wonderful. And thank you so much for doing the work back there because I know it can't be, you know, the moments of joy as you said. Uh, but it can be a lot of fun <laughs> lining up against that super duper majority of, uh, of you know, and their shenanigans, their power grabs uh, each and every day. But uh, thank you for for being there and for you know doing what you can, which it seems like is quite significant. Really, you you got me a little bit more hopeful uh, about the General Assembly and and Frankfurt uh, in general. Well, you said it best, Aaron. Here's the thing. I had someone email me. Who knew? I guess I got one day I got 6,000 emails. And I'm like, who put that in my e email box? <laughs> but people want the same things. 
They want their lives to matter. They want their children to be safe. They want food on their table. And I promise you, most of the people that are homeless don't want to be. So we can put a man on the moon. We can solve those issues. We just don't have the fortitude to sit down and focus until they're resolved. The money for COVID came from somewhere. So why are we allowing people to sleep on the streets? That's right. I agree with that. Colonel Pam, uh, you know that you are like a mentor and a big sister. You're my, you're my baby sister. I know, I know. And I was telling Aaron, like, um, I might have been in a little bit of trouble because I haven't been like, you know, and I blamed it all on him because I haven't been as available. But I told you I have been watching you closely. Yes, I have. We got that cleared up when we first talked. Yes. Thank you very much. I love you. But you know what, Colonel Pam, I'm going to tell you something why you are a shero to me. And uh, when I saw you uh, in a news clip, you were being you. And that's what I really admire about you because you did not go to Frankfurt and feel like you had to be someone else. And I know with my daughter being in the Air Force, some people think the Air Force is, you know, you don't have to go through as many obstacles as some of the other uh, armed services. But I'm here to tell you that I understand and I know it can be brutal. And you did 27 years and a black woman, okay? A black woman coming out of the United States Air Force as a colonel. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, I, I, got, I have to like, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing it right, I'm sure, but I have to <laughs> salute Thank you. you. And, and I just know, and I told you that you were going to win because I knew that. Um, I don't know how I knew that, but I knew that. And I also knew that you would be different, that you honestly care about the people yeah. and that you wanted to make change. And the other thing that I do know about you, knowing you personally, is that that's never gonna change. That's always who you have been. Although, don't get it twisted, I told you, you know, to get after me, you might have to stand in a chair sometimes a little oh, bit. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, oh, but you know what? Wait I respect you. Yes, uh, ma'am, I respect you. Because we I know this that. too. Look, I know this too. 27 years coming out of the military, the United States Air Force, okay? <laughs> I know my daughter is about to be a captain and she's a bad mama jamma, okay? She don't play. And I know that in order for you to get to where you were, not only did you have to have the brilliance and the perseverance, you have to be tough. So I want everybody and the viewers to know, although Colonel Pam, she's, you know, laughter, a joyful person, a woman of faith, don't get it twisted. She ain't scared. <laughs> I thank you. You will get them. I saw I you. I saw you on the TV and I couldn't do anything. I, I wasn't shocked. I wasn't surprised because I knew that is just who you are. And I'm like, yeah, and I'm glad she's representing Louisville. Thank you. And, uh, you know, the veal in the house. I just had to say that. But um, I just thank you, Colonel Pam. I thank you for all the help you've given me. And most of all, I thank you for your service. And we all thank you for what you're doing in Frankfurt. Yeah, thank you. Love to you. Now, and then I just want to see really quickly, uh, Colonel Pam, Representative Colonel Pam, we, we are so honored that you've been here on the show. I want to see if you like, and I know I've got the little piece of paper. So I'm a Colonel too. Uh, I, I, I know it doesn't compare to what you've done to get I'm your rank. Uh, we're but all colonels I'm, here. I'm a colonel <laughs> in the army of life, so I don't know. <laughs> tell you i gotta tell you this i apologize if you heard it but uh, we had a 90 year old veteran who uh came to be honored and we say nice things about him and i went up to him after the ceremony and i said um congratulations thank you for your service and his rep that was sponsoring him says she's a colonel you have to salute her he said she's a kentucky colonel <laughs> No, you were like, I'm, I'm the real. <laughs> no, 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 and the guy said, <laughs> he said, 
<laughs> no, she's an Air Force colonel. And, and this 90 year old guy got so flabbergasted. He was trying to find a way to be nice to me and salute me. I'm like, please don't have a heart attack on my, please. <laughs> and then only thing that could come out was uh, I once knew a colored girl that saved my life and I never got a chance to take a picture with her. Oh my gosh. And, and so thank you. And I said, well, take a picture with this colored girl. Like, I am not going to fight this 90 year old man about his use of terminology when he couldn't find the words to honor me. He's trying to say something yeah. nice about me. And I'm like, okay. So afterwards we took the picture and we, and, and I said, look, if you hold me much tighter, I'm going to have to charge you. <laughs> <laughs> and we just, it was a pleasant moment, but here's the thing. You guys fight the battles that matter. Like me feeding children matters. Families thriving matters. Having a, a minimum wage that's $15 matters. Yes. Now I could have tackled this man, knocked him over for sure. And to what? To what? Now all the refs that were standing around, they were they didn't know what was going to happen. And when I responded the way I responded, they they breathed. And they one of them came up to me afterwards and said, there's something about resolving conflict another way. Well, yeah, you don't always have to fight. You don't always have to be mad. I, I had someone, one of the reps say something I thought was racist. And after the committee meeting was over, I went up to him and I said, you said this, because I wrote it down while he was saying it. And I had his exact words. I said, you said this, did you mean it? He said, well, let me explain. So he explained himself. I was really curious. Like, what would cause another human being to say that? And then we can start having solutions if we can start to understand one another. So he explained it to me. And, and then he says, well, how do you feel about it? And I told him how I felt about it. He says, I never thought about that. He said, nobody's ever stopped me before. And I said, I'm not stopping you. I am trying to understand. And he says, well, why don't you come back to my office and we can talk more about it? I said, I got to go to lunch. I'm hungry. <laughs> but there are opportunities to talk with people where they are. Now, there's some other people that I just had to get with. And I do that in private. But you're not going to mess with me. I just because I smile doesn't mean... This is a family problem. Doesn't mean you're gonna mess with me. And, and then you get it done and you move on to feeding children. I am not gonna let the naysayers can't do nothing, won't do nothing, stop me from doing something for the people that need the help. Raise them. That was a sermon right there. Woo! <laughs> this has been Life Lessons Hallelujah. with it's Representative hard. Colonel Pam. You, thank you for dropping the knowledge and bringing the wisdom. And I love your uh, attitude. And I'm so glad you're there in Frankfurt doing this work. Any final thoughts you want to leave us with? Love people. Like when I see people walking down the hallway at the Capitol, I don't say, well, I used to <laughs> say there's a Republican because it brings a whole set of actions with that word. What I say is, there's a dad that has two kids that loves his wife, and he's a horse farmer. I wonder what's going on with him. And then if you don't know what other people are experiencing, don't talk. I joined the Mount, Mountain Caucus because I was shocked that people in Kentucky don't have portable water. There is no way in 2021 that should happen. So I said, let me find out about it. And so I joined the Mountain Caucus. And the guy asked me, why did you join the Mountain Caucus? I said, because you need help. You ain't got no water. <laughs> <laughs> so if we asked ourselves, am I taking an action for the greater good and for Kentucky? Sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes it's no. But you got to shore up and be truthful to yourself. We can get Kentucky to the top of the list based on the things we agree upon. We might never agree on pro-choice. I don't need to, but I do know we all agree that children shouldn't be hungry. So let's work on the things that we agree upon and the things we don't, bury them. Love people. 
or or another approach representative colonel pam uh, the things we disagree on, we can make sure there's a statewide referendum on them so that we can take advantage of the moment politically. How about that? That seems like- well, that would sum up my session. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you again for joining us and for sharing your stories. Thank you. I can <laughs> Love you, Colonel Pam. Mm -hmm. You guys are the best. Keep on keeping on. Talk with you soon. Okay. All right. Goodbye. And I think we're going to have uh, Kimberly close us out this evening. Well, thank you, Erin. Are we ready to turn Kentucky purple? Yes, we are. Join Progress Kentucky. It's the only thing this week that you should be concentrating on is joining the progress that we're making in Kentucky with Progress Kentucky. We're very, 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 very close to 4,000 likes on Facebook. So please go check us out. Uh, and like us and invite your friends. Invite every last one of your friends, right? The ones that want it will do it. The ones that don't, they won't. So we know that our uh, Commonwealth needs more uh, kernels of truth to call out the propaganda and the ridiculous claims of folks like Mitch McConnell, Rand Paul, and Andy Barr. We're hatching a plan. I guess we're still at Easter because we're hatching a plan to reach out to our neighbors and mobilize the folks around the state to join us and take action. But it's going to take you. Yes, and it's gonna take some resources. We're gonna print up some postcards. We're gonna add some handwritten messages and we're going to spread the word about how we can turn Kentucky purple. We've got a fundraising goal of $1,500. I know I had raised it last week, but we're back to $1,500 because I don't think we've met that yet. Of it. All right. It appears that Denise is paused, but uh, please, are you back? <laughs> I, I was. I was going to start talking about Couchfire Media because I personally feel like. What was the part that you didn't hear? What was oh, the last the, part? The, the last part hear? we heard were, uh, was to donate to give us money, like so we need. Okay, well that's the last part I was talking about. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then we I went money. out. You know, broadband, we do free. need infrastructure. Broadband, broadband, <laughs> broadband right? Sure. Okay, so we already went through about the money. I'm asking for money. Like I'm begging you, please, 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 to make this happen. We do need some cash, okay? Whatever you want to send, we'll be happy and so appreciative. Now, also, we wouldn't be able to do this if it was not for Mr. Ken Howe of Couch Fire Media, okay? Couch Fire Media is your one-stop shop, right? For multi-camera, live stream, fiction narrative, nonfiction, educational, informative animation, and commercial video production content. Set your content on fire with Couch Fire Media. So go visit them today. Uh, www.couchfiremedia.com. Once again, that's www.couchfiremedia.com. So, you know, we all are doing some things to try to help to get this state purple and then eventually blue. So just want to tell you about some other wonderful work that we've got going on. So you can check out the Jones Report every Sunday with Mike Breuer, Betsy Foster, and of course, Yours truly, Kimberly Cecil Jones, as your host. The Jones Report radio program can be found on Facebook at the Jones Report radio program. Yesterday, we had a fantastic tribute uh, dedicated to DMX and other pertinent issues of the moment, uh, primarily international and national news. So go check out our replay. You will really, really like it, okay? And then also we cannot forget my girl, my sis in the fight for democracy, Ms. Denise Gray on K Denise Gray's uh, Kentucky Conversations. It's the second Sunday of every month and you can catch it over there on the Bluegrass Activist Alliance Facebook page. You know what, everyone, uh, we're going to see you next week, of course, at the same channel, same time. 
but this week, as you go throughout your week, okay, and you're giving money to Progress Kentucky to help us in our endeavors, and you're watching the other shows, but remember to do something nice for someone, okay? Do go out of your way, a listening ear, a kind word, a deed, a gesture, whatever you can do. Be nice to someone this week. And until then, we'll see you next Monday night. Have a good week.